Hello, this is Colonial Puppet, and this is Modern Skyscraper Tutorial number 3. And unlike the other two tutorials, this one's going to be a little less uniform. I decided not to break this tutorial up into as many parts as in the past, as this build was a little bit more sporadic and unplanned, which may be evident from the overall design of this skyscraper. And while normally I don't plan out my designs before building them, I usually have a general idea of what it is I'm going to build. At least that was the case with the first two tutorials, but this one I had absolutely no image in my head as to what I was going to build, so a lot of this was just straight up off the cuff, which I think led to a more unconventional design, which some of you may like, some of you may dislike. I personally liked it enough to make it into its own tutorial, and with that, let's get into some of the more specific details of this building. It has a floor height of only 78 blocks, but it has a pinnacle height of 132 blocks, and unfortunately I was unable to get a readout of how many blocks actually went into this build, because the version of MCEdit that I usually use to calculate that is no longer supporting the version of Minecraft I used to build this skyscraper. But that's okay, because I'm assuming most of you don't mind how many blocks go into this building and are just interested in knowing how to build it, so with that let's get right into the tutorial. We're going to start this tutorial off with building the lobby of the skyscraper. Okay, so the first thing I do is I create this 19 square stepped grid, and I use blocks of iron to plot the points of this grid, but you can use whatever you want because they're going to end up being covered anyway. And each of these points are spaced five blocks from each other, meaning the areas covered by these white stripes are five blocks long, and the points are on every sixth block. In other words, the dimensions of this building are 31 blocks by 31 blocks. Next, after deleting this corner point, I use white concrete to lay out the footprint of what will become the vertical supports of this building. And notice how on every corner of the building I build a three block L shape out of the white concrete. Then it's just a matter of building up the white concrete an additional five blocks, making these pillars six blocks tall. Next, I connect all these pillars horizontally with two layers of polished andesite stairs like you see here. And then moving to the stepped side of the building, I build up with three blocks of polished andesite and I place two polished andesite slabs on either side of it to make doorways. I do this on both sides of the two steps in the middle. Next I use white concrete and polished andesite slabs to build two doorways in this little corner right here. Next I build upside down polished andesite stairs along the bottom of each of the windows, basically anywhere where there isn't a doorway that we just built. Moving to the inside of the building, I build these two white concrete pillars with a block of sea lantern on the fourth block up like so. Now moving back to the outside of the building, I place light blue stained glass within all of the window openings we made earlier. Minus these small spaces above the door openings we made at the front of the building, I fill these in with light blue stained glass panes. And then it's back to filling in with light blue stained glass. Next, from the one corner with the two small doorways, I lay out this 7x13 block rectangle made out of polished andesite, making sure to leave a 3 block opening on the one 7 block side like so. Then I place these four additional blocks, which I suggest you pause the video to get their exact placement. Eventually, I'm going to build up all of the polished andesite like I did to this one side, but first I build up this three block by one block iron pillar in the middle of this rectangle like so. And then I replace the third block of the left side with sea lantern, and then the sixth block of the right side with sea lantern like you see here. Next, I wrap a polished diorite staircase around this iron pillar, starting on one side going up three blocks, followed by a two by 
five polished diorite slab platform, and then I build up an additional three blocks on the opposite side, followed by a second two by five block polished diorite slab platform. Then I build up the rest of the polished and the site surrounding the staircase like so. And then I build up this polished andesite, but not before building these two strands of ladders like you see here. Then I build two layers of polished andesite across this entranceway, as well as across the entranceway to the staircase. I also decided to build polished diorite stairs across the entranceways like you see here. And then I repeated these two steps for the space in front of the ladders like so. Next, I placed a ring of stone slab around the perimeter of this opening like so, followed by a block of sea lantern in the middle, and then I covered everything in a layer of quartz block. Next, I build this white concrete opening off of the core of the building like you see here. And then I build this second white concrete wall slash opening using the points we had made earlier on the grid as a guide as to where I should be placing it. Next I move on to building the ceiling and spacing out the overhead lighting of this first floor. And this is going to be a little difficult to explain. You might be better off just pausing the video and studying where I place all of these blocks. But essentially I am basing the placement of these stone slab strips on the grid we had built earlier. Basically I'm building a stone slab strip on either side of the center point of each of the squares in the grid. I do this both vertically and horizontally, and then at each intersection where there's that hashtag looking shape, I place a block of sea lantern like you see in the video. And then once all of the sea lanterns are placed, I fill in the open space with the stone slab, and then I cover everything in a layer of quartz. Notice how I don't fill in the area outside of those two white concrete openings that we had built earlier. Next I build up the core and stairwell of the building an additional six blocks using the same design that we had used for the first floor. I'm not going to go into the details of what I'm building because it is identical to the core and stairwell that we had built just below this. I will place however a timestamp in the description of this video linking to the portion of the tutorial in which I go over building the stairwell and core in more detail. Once the core of the building is done, I will build up the white concrete pillars of the building an additional six blocks like you see in the video. Moving down to the inside of the first floor, I realized that I didn't build this point on the grid up into its own pillar, so to fix that, I build it up six blocks with white concrete, and then I replace the fourth block up with a block of sea lantern. Next, I connect all of the white concrete pillars horizontally with two layers of white concrete, like you see in the video. However, I fill these spaces above these two doorways completely with white concrete. Next I fill in this corner first by extending the white concrete until they make a 90 degree angle like so. Then I remove this inner layer of white concrete followed by filling in this corner with polished andesite. Moving to those two inner wall slash openings that we had built earlier, I place a strip of light blue stained glass panes on top of each of them to act as guide rails for the second floor. Then I build these three pillars six blocks up, with the fifth block being a block of sea lantern. Moving back to that corner we just extended, I fill it in with some stone slabs, and then I place a sea lantern block at the center like so. Then I fill all of the open window spaces in with light blue stained glass. Then I build two layers of white concrete horizontally in these two areas. 
And then it's back to repeating the same ceiling slash lighting fixture pattern we built for the first floor. However, two things are different. One of these things was intentional and the other was not. The unintentional thing that I did was I used polished andesite slabs instead of stone slabs, which was a mistake on my part. I would suggest that you use stone slabs if you want to keep it consistent, or if you like the polished andesite slabs look, you can use that instead. And the intentional difference is that we are now filling in the space that we had previously left blank. That is to say, all of the space within the white walls is being covered with ceiling. Now notice that I'm filling the spaces at either end of this building in with light gray concrete powder instead of the quartz, and then the rest is filled in with quartz like we have been doing. Again, I recommend that you pause this if you want to get the placement of the sea lantern and everything just right, because it is kind of difficult to explain and I think the visuals speak for themselves. Next I place acacia doors on each of the doorway openings we had built earlier. Then in this opposite corner I place two iron doors with stone buttons to activate them, both on the inside and outside of the building. Then I place an end rod over top each of the doors. Moving to the front entranceway and atrium of the building, I replace these three sea lantern blocks that overlook the atrium with polished andesite blocks. Then I build four block strands of iron bars down from each of these three blocks, followed by a block of sea lantern. Then I delete the fourth iron bar from each of the strands and replace it with an end rod. And then lastly, I build out these three corners like we did with the opposite corner. First with these two layers of white concrete, followed by a layer of stone slabs with a piece of sea lantern in the middle. And then everything is covered over with a layer of light gray concrete powder. The next thing we're going to build in this tutorial is what I'm calling the restaurant floor. And I'm only calling it that because I think it would make a good restaurant with its outdoor balconies for outdoor seating and whatnot. But anyway, we start this floor off just like any other by building the stairwell slash core. So if you want to know how to do this in more detail, again, I ask that you refer to the timestamps in the description of the video. Next I start the continuation of these outer white concrete vertical pillars. Now I'm going to build up the areas we just marked with an additional 5 blocks as well as add these two additional pillars so keep note of those. These two pillars line up perfectly with these two outer pillars. Next, I connect all of these pillars like so horizontally. Moving to these openings that directly overlook these three balconies, instead of placing windows within them, I instead place these polished andesite stairs at the top like so. I next turn these two openings into four by splitting them evenly with two more white concrete pillars, and then I place two layers of polished andesite stairs over the outer openings like so. Then I'll do the same thing on the opposing side. And then I will start filling in the windows starting with these two inner openings. Next I will place acacia doors on these two openings as well as the opposite two openings. Next I'll place these light blue glass pane guide rails around essentially the entire front and sides of the skyscraper like so. Next I'll place three end rods in these three balcony corners like so. And then one last thing I forgot to place this sea lantern block on this pillar. 
And then it's time to insert the ceiling and light fixtures, which is again the same pattern we've been doing. I suggest that you pause the video if you want to get the placement of the sea lantern just right. But basically that grid we initially made at the very start of this tutorial, the sea lanterns are basically in the center of each of those squares that made up the 19 block grid or 19 square grid that is. So it's just a layer of upper stone slabs and some sea lantern and then everything gets covered over in both quartz and in light gray concrete powder. At this point I make one off topic design change which is I remove one of these iron doors that are nestled in the back corner of the building. Next I'll move to building the general floor layout that will comprise most of this skyscraper. And like with my other tutorials, I will only show how to build this floor once and then just copy paste it several times so that the tutorial itself doesn't get too stale and repetitive. Speaking of which, the first thing I do with building the general floor is to build the stairwell and core, which is exactly the same design we've been using in the other floors of this building. So again, I refer you to the timestamps in the description of the video that go over the core construction in more detail. Once the core is built, I will then mark where I will continue the vertical pillars made of white concrete like so. I will then build up these pillars so that they are six blocks tall and then I will connect them all horizontally like you see in the video with two layers of white concrete. And now just like with the restaurant floor below it, I will place two doorways on the outer openings of both of these areas of the building, starting with this side that opens up to the rectangular patch of light gray concrete powder, and then moving to the openings overlooking the other patch of light gray concrete powder. Next I will start treating the rest of the openings as windows, filling them in with light blue stained glass. That is, of course, except the openings that surround the outside of the patches of light gray concrete powder. Instead, we're going to put a perimeter of light blue stained glass panes around them to act as guardrails. And then I'm going to place an end rod at the base of each of the center vertical white concrete pillars like so. Then it's just a matter of repeating the same ceiling and light fixture pattern that we've been following for the previous couple floors, which once that's completed, that is all that is needed to build the general floor of this skyscraper. Next I'm going to copy the floor we just built another seven times, making a total of eight of the general floors. Next I'm going to start work on the first level of the penthouse. The first thing I do is I build out these three balconies which are identical to the three balconies on the restaurant level of the skyscraper. I start by building out the white concrete like so, followed by the layer of stone slabs with a block of sea lantern in the center of each of the three balconies, and then I cover over everything with a layer of light gray concrete powder. Next I'll move on to building the core, which is a continuation of the core design that we've been using for the entire skyscraper, so I'll just gloss over this. Next I will build up the vertical white concrete pillars in the same place that we have been for most of the skyscraper, starting with the footprints of each of the pillars, and then I build them up to the six blocks in height, and then I connect them all horizontally with white concrete. Then I run polished andesite stairs along the top of each of the six openings overlooking the three balconies. Then I continue the pattern of breaking up these two openings into four and placing doorways on the outer openings while making the inner two openings windows. 
Here I am actually placing the acacia doors and windows on this side and then I move over to the other side and do the same exact thing. Then I begin filling in the remaining openings with light blue stained glass. Next I run light blue stained glass panes along the balconies of the building at the front and sides to act as guardrails. Moving to the ceiling, I start by building out what will become the four balconies of the second level of the penthouse, which are these four squares. I fill them in with stone slabs with sea lanterns in the center, and then I cover them over with light gray concrete powder, just like we've been doing with the rest of the balconies. Then I fill in the remainder of the ceiling with the same pattern that we've been using for the rest of the skyscraper with the sea lanterns being placed in the center of each of the squares that made up the initial grid that we started off with with this tutorial, followed by filling in the remaining space with stone slabs and then covering everything over in a layer of quartz. Moving to the core, I didn't actually realize that I want these stairs to end at this level until after I had built the stairs up to the next level, so here I am actually deleting the two flights of stairs that make up this level of the building, as well as the two polished diorite slab platforms that go along with it, and then I build across two light blue stained glass panes to act as guide rails. Then I just cover over the top of the core with quartz like so. While I want the core to end on this level, I still want the next level to be accessed, so I'm going to build a single staircase up to the next level, starting by building this white concrete wall from this vertical pillar to this corner of the core. You can figure out which corner of the core this is based on the acacia doors in the background. Moving to the opposite side of the white wall we just built, I place a three block wide staircase with polished diorite stairs, making sure to delete the stone slabs and quartz that are directly above it. Then I just build this wall out of white concrete directly up against the stairs like so. Next I'm going to build the second level of the penthouse. First I space out the footprints of what will be the vertical white concrete pillars and I suggest that you pause the video to really get the correct placement of these footprints as they're a bit different from what we've been doing with the rest of the building. Once the footprints are laid out I build up the pillars an additional 5 blocks to make them 6 blocks tall. And again I suggest that you pause the video to make sure that your placement of the pillars are exactly like you see in the video. Next I connect the pillars horizontally like so. Then I run polished andesite stairs along the tops of these eight openings overlooking the four balconies. And then the rest of the openings are filled in with light blue stained glass. Then I run the light blue stained glass pane guardrails along the perimeter of the four balconies. Next I build this six block tall white concrete wall directly next to the stairwell and then I build from that wall another three block wide stairway. Then a second six block tall white concrete wall is built directly next to that stairwell. Next I fill in this one block gap with a six block tall pillar of white concrete, followed by filling in this opening under the stairs with polished diorite blocks. And then lastly I build a guardrail around the exposed stair with light blue stained glass panes like so. Next I start building the ceiling and lighting fixtures using the same pattern that we've been more or less using for the rest of the building. It's important to note that these five isolated squares are going to be filled with light gray concrete powder and the rest is going to be 
covered in quartz. Another detail that's important not to miss is that I build this horizontal white concrete across the one stairwell like so. Next, I'm going to build what remains of the top portion of the skyscraper along with the spire. The first thing I do is I build a light blue stained glass pane guard rail around the stairs like so. Then I lay out where I will place the vertical white concrete pillars like so. Then notice how I mark out the three block corners of square in the one corner of the building. And then within the square I build up a 5x5x6 five by five by iron frame. Next I build up the six block tall white concrete pillars and then I form a grid when I connect them all horizontally like so. Next, I continue the pattern of lining the tops of the openings overlooking the balconies with polished andesite stairs. In this case, there are eight openings. Then I fill the remaining openings in with light blue stained glass. Next, I place the light blue stained glass pane guardrails around the perimeter of each of the balconies. Moving to the ceiling, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. The four outermost squares are going to get filled in the same way we have been with a layer of stone slabs with a sea lantern in the middle of each and then they all get covered over in light gray concrete powder. But the others I'm going to actually fill in with regular old glass and then place a sea lantern in the center of each like so. But before filling in the light gray concrete powder, I first place an end rod over top each of the sea lantern blocks. Then finally I fill in the light gray concrete powder. Moving to the next level, I start off by building that 5x5x6 five by five by iron block frame, followed by the footprints of where I'm going to build up the white gray concrete pillars then I build up those white gray concrete pillars like you see here and then once again I make a grid when I connect all of these pillars horizontally like so. Next I more or less continue the same ceiling pattern by filling in the outermost squares with a layer of stone slab with a sea lantern in the center followed by a layer of light gray concrete powder and then I fill in the three innermost squares with a single layer of glass with a sea lantern in the center like so. And here I am actually filling in the light gray concrete powder. Then once again, I place end rods on the top of each of the exposed sea lantern blocks. Moving back down to the level below the one we were just working on, I connect the two sea lantern blocks with iron bars like so. Then once again, all of the openings overlooking a balcony get a strip of polished andesite stairs along the top like so. And then the remaining openings get filled with light blue stained glass. Moving to the next level, I start once again with the 5x5x6 five by five by blocks iron frame and then I space out where I'm going to place the vertical white concrete pillars and then once again I connect them all horizontally like so. Next I fill in these two squares with a layer of stone slabs with a sea lantern in the center of each and then I cover that over with light gray concrete powder and then I fill in this single square with regular glass and with a sea lantern also in the center. Then once again I move back down to the level below the one that we were working on and I connect the sea lantern blocks with a strip of iron bars. Next I change things up by filling in these openings completely with rows of polished andesite stairs like so. I also do the same thing with these four openings.
Now moving to the top level, I build the 5x5x6 iron frame and encase it in some white concrete exactly like you see in the video. Then I fill this opening in with glass surrounding a single block of sea lantern. Then that single block of sea lantern is connected to the sea lantern below it with a strand of iron bars. Then the four remaining openings are filled in once again with stacked rows of polished andesite stairs, like so. Then I build up four six block tall iron pillars and run polished andesite stairs along the bottom like this. Then I connect the pillars at the top with iron. Then I build up an extra section of this iron frame, an additional three blocks, connecting them horizontally once again. Then from this corner closest to the stepped balconies of the building, I start building diagonally to the opposite corner, like so. Then I run this vertical pillar up to meet the diagonal iron blocks, and then I extend that vertical pillar up an additional seven blocks, like so. Then I place a quartz slab on each of the diagonal stepped iron blocks. Then I run iron bars along all four sides of the vertical iron spire. Then from the iron spire, I build up an eight block polished diorite wall spire. And lastly, I top off the building with an end rod like so. Now the skyscraper has reached its pinnacle height. Now all that's left is to implement some last minute design changes, starting by placing all of these end rods in the corners that you see here along the stepped balconies of the building. I also decide to place a vertical pillar in this bottom corner of the lobby of the building. Another major design change I decided after topping out the building was to build out windows at the very front of the building. So to do this, I start by building out the white concrete, much in the same way that we did to build the three balconies at the top and bottom of the building. Then nestled within each of those white concrete Vs we just built, I built this little light housing, which is essentially a four block square of white concrete, followed by three blocks of white concrete surrounding a single block of sea lantern like so. And like I said, I build one of these within each of those white concrete Vs we just built like so. Then predictably, I fill in the space between those outer white concrete Vs with light blue stained glass, creating the windows like so. Then as a last detail to the front of the building, I add a plain glass ceiling to the base of the windows that we just built like so. Next, to add some depth to the back of the building, I outline this portion of the facade in white concrete like so, and then I fill in the space between the white concrete with light gray concrete. And once that last step is completed, that is it for skyscraper tutorial number three. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful slash entertaining. I know this is a shorter tutorial that is a little bit less organized when compared to the other two tutorials, but I had fun making it and I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you are at any point stuck in the tutorial, feel free to leave a comment. I will try and get back to you to help you through the tutorial if there was something that wasn't as clear as it could have been. But overall, I think I was pretty thorough and again, I'll be leaving some timestamps in the description of the video to help break up the tutorial into pieces to make it easier to skip through if you 
are following along. And with that, that is pretty much it. This has been Colonial Puppet, and as always, have a nice day.